at the end of the day, the person you go to first to understand how the system works is the deployment engineer and the support engineer, because they're the ones who are going to tell you how the customer is using the product and how it's deployed and your solution architects. Don't get me wrong, the engineers are the, the, they're the engine, right, in engineering. But sometimes, you know, they'll be very ho super technical and very focused. So I totally, totally get that. And, and that is kind of, you know, when you talk about those, historically, those roles have been quite separate. But I think we're seeing now, certainly with your security engineers, your privacy engineers, and your product engineers, even support and deployment, they're all starting to collaborate very tightly. Kind of like in the past, it was DevSecOps. You know, you had your walls, right? And younger engineers probably can't even imagine a world before DevSecOps. It's the same with security and product. It's heading in that direction, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. And there's new, you know, with, with AI becoming more prevalent and LLMs, you know, there, there's whole new domains of security that are being created right in front of us, right? And there, I always keep my eye on the job market just to see how it's performing, what, it, what it's, you know, what the trends are and everything. And I'm slowly starting to see AI security roles open up, right? Yeah. And like, and like normal companies that aren't NVIDIA, right? And, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm watching this industry start to pivot because now everyone, everyone is saying, you know, oh, we're going to incorporate AI into our, into our platform, into our solution, into our offering and whatnot. We're going to offset this headcount, but companies are slowly starting to wake up to the fact of, oh, that's a totally different kind of security that we have to provide. I mean, there isn't even true, you know, AI security products on the market right now. I mean... There's a couple offerings out there, but I haven't seen anything that like, you know, is, is like truly built for it. You know, it was kind of like a bolt on sort of thing. Yeah, I, I, no, that's a great observation. And, you know, again, when you look at kind of how the threat landscape has evolved over the last four or five years and, you know, the cost benefit analysis, like people who have the current, and one of the, one of the points that Beyond Identity always makes is that legacy MFA is not good enough. Legacy solutions are good enough because the landscape has changed. And if you haven't been popped, it's not because you're good, it's probably because you haven't been targeted. And the whole cost benefit analysis for some of those APKs has radically changed. It's it's that, uh, yeah, that landscape is, has completely changed. And then you layer on AI on top of that. And it, it, it accelerates the scope, whether it's, it's malware as a service, phishing as a service. You layer on AI, and then all of a sudden, your threat landscape, let's put aside the, the, the innovative attacks and the, and the new enablement attacks like deepfakes, but just on top of the legacy stuff, the scope and scale just explodes, and you can't defend um, and then, you know, AI is going to augment products and everybody just puts an AI stamp on their product, just like, you know, back in the day, you had a Windows certified hard drive and you're like, what does that even mean? Well, it's Windows certified. But so there are a lot of products out there and people have to be careful when they, they stamp 